This week, we start off in South Africa at the Grand Prix Masters. The only requirements are that drivers must be over 45 and still able to handle a single-seater generating 650 brake horsepower. The Masters boasts some top names and world champions from Formula One's recent past. Well, I'm blind and deaf, and uh, so <laughs> I just hope to do a good job. I have had a few little problems. I had food poisoning two days ago, so I'm feeling a bit weak at the moment. But uh, I, you can expect the most fantastic race, and uh, nobody's going to hold back. Some are more famous in sports and touring cars. Time has changed so much that it's a complete new thing for me. When I was doing Formula One, that was the time when sex was safe and racing was dangerous, you know? <laughs> and this is a bit of a different story now. But uh, I'm really looking forward and um, I'm waiting for the race. And for me, as having not been so successful in Formula One, it's a great honor to be with these masters here in one race. Even the commentator was an old timer. Murray Walker called every Grand Prix for 51 years. And despite being well into his 80s, was lured back by his friend Nigel Mansell. Former Tolman, Renault, Brabham, Lotus and Arrows driver, Englishman Derek Warwick, was elected to stage a few demonstration laps in the business district of Santon. His opposition on the leafy streets was American Eddie Cheever. The cars are essentially Reynard chassis fitted with the Cosworth McLaren V8. With a top speed of 320 kilometers an hour, these are fast machines, and without driving aids such as traction control that are found in Formula One, they test the driver's abilities to the full. Masters events have sprung up in tennis, golf, and to an extent, football and rugby union. But perhaps because of the risks involved, no one had previously considered one for motorsport. The 1992 Formula One world champion Mansell, now aged 52, and his peers, came out of retirement for the Grand Prix Masters, of which the Briton had been named Special Ambassador. He was joined by past motor racing greats like Emerson Fittipaldi, world champion in 1972 and 74, Alan Jones, who was world champion in 1980, Johnny Herbert, Stuck, René Arnoux and Ricardo Patrese at Kyle Army, a track which most of them have challenged before. Kyle Army was home to the South African Grand Prix from 1961 until the circuit changed hands in the early 1990s. At nearly 1800 meters above sea level and prone to high temperatures and sudden savage thunderstorms, the track has unique challenges for engineers and drivers alike. In qualifying, Nigel Mansell was dominant, out to repeat his victories of 1985 and 1992. It was an awesome lap I put together. Uh, I slid it around the uh, first, second and third turn. And um, I hope they got it on telly because uh, there was nothing left in the car, nothing left on the track. It was just one of those perfect laps. For many years, Kyle Army had a mile-long downhill straight, one of the fastest pieces of tarmac in world motorsport. Then the track was extensively remodeled, new pits built, and that iconic long straight was scrapped. Two-time Formula One world champion Fittipaldi joined Mansell on the front row, the Brazilian just over half a second slower. A fraction off his pace sat Italy's Riccardo Patrese. Well, it could be a very tough race. Uh, the last se uh, set of tires I had, I saw Nigel, I said, I'm going to follow Nigel, he back off, I back off, he back off, <laughs> and I lost my quick lap. And uh, it didn't happen, but I mean, I want to congratulate Nigel and Ricardo to doing a great job. I'm very proud to be here with all these great champions, and it'll be a great show tomorrow. I mean, we're going to drive as hard as we ever drove. I mean, qualify today was coming right on the edge. Patrese is the most experienced driver in Formula One history with 256 Grand Prix starts. Although no longer the host of a Formula One Grand Prix, the track is still occasionally used for hot weather testing especially during the Northern Hemisphere winter. Australian Alan Jones, world champ in 1980, was a non-starter, forced out and declared unfit to race with severe neck spasms after practice. His place was taken by reserve driver Alessio Salazar of Chile. From the first corner, the 30-lap Grand Prix proved beyond any doubt that the Masters have lost nothing when it comes to enthralling race fans. The Kyle Army race venue was declared a sellout and searing heat baked down on the 70,000 strong crowd. Mansell grabbed an immediate lead, which he wouldn't lose, despite the very best efforts of several drivers. Stefan Johansson slid off the track on lap three, the Swede making a minor piece of motor racing history, becoming the first driver to crash out of a Grand Prix Masters race. France's Jacques Lafitte struggled with technical problems throughout the race and pitted several times. Before the beginning of the race, Fittipaldi's car stalled on the grid, but the rules of the race allowed him to overtake in the warm-up lap to take his place on the grid for the start of the race. 
With big horsepower and minimal electronic aids, drivers put on a good show, power sliding their way through the unforgiving high and low speed bends and steep hills of Kailami. The equal nature of the cars allowed the drivers to race extremely closely throughout. The feet eventually collided with compatriot René Arnoux in the closing stages of the race. Lafitte left the track for good, while Arnoux finished at the back of the field in 12th. Mansell's grip on the lead came under threat from Fittipaldi throughout the race, but Fittipaldi's determination to pass increased as the race wore on, and Mansell had to use all his skill and experience to hold off the Brazilian in an exciting duel. The battle continued right up until the final lap, but Mansell won the first Grand Prix Masters race in a time of 50 minutes and 55 seconds, with Fittipaldi just four tenths of a second behind in second place. The pair were the only former world champions in the field. Italian Riccardo Patrese held on to third place throughout the race and finished a further 20 seconds off the pace. Andrea De Cesaris finished fourth, while Britain Derek Warwick and Austrian Hans Stuck completed the top six. After Mansell won the F1 title in 1992, he promptly moved to America, where he won the IndyCar Championship the next year. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean I'm drained now, and uh, mentally I'm very drained, because, uh, you know, I, I tried to push very hard with the car to get away from Emmo, and I just couldn't. And that's hard work, and uh, you know, and the last five laps were very difficult on the tires, very difficult. Now, después de tantos anos, voltar a pilotar o carro de novo. It was very special to drive a car after so many years, and this challenge with Nigel was fantastic. He didn't make a single mistake. I tried to overtake twice, three times, but didn't manage it. But I enjoyed every second of the race. And it's very good to be back in motor racing, to compete again. I'm very happy. It was a very special day in my life today. I only have to thank God for this new opportunity to be here in the Grand Prix Masters, having fun and doing what I like most in life, which is driving a race car.